My name is Corey. I'm 23 years old, and I live in Houston, Texas. My strange obsession is that I like to eat hot glue sticks. First time I ate a glue stick was about six or seven years ago. My aunt is big on crafting, and I was helping her with a project. And I just started picking up the little strands that were being left here and there and start eating it. And it's purple. Once I bit into it, you know, I just had to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, and I couldn't stop. Oops. I dropped some. It seemed to help me cope with a lot of issues that were going on. I think from what you've said so far in your upbringing, you were never taught or allowed to love yourself. You just grew up rejecting yourself. I shamed myself and put myself down. Uh, you know, it contributed to my depression, suicidal attempts, and self-mutilation. I just, I was angry most of my life. And then you finally found the glue sticks. So in doing the glue sticks, it gave you a release that prevented you from turning your anger against yourself. And in thinking about the suicide. I never looked at it like that. <laughs> in many ways, I think it was life-saving for you. Ring Ross. You want a Ring Ross beard? Thinner version. A thinner version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's gonna be hard to call, keep calling me mom. Moms don't have beards. So, what, what do you want me to call you? Not one, I need you. <laughs> like, not to call me mom. Like, at all? No. I mean, can't pop understand that I need you a little time? No. <laughs> you always say, I just want you happy, I just want you happy. I do. And that's going to make me happy. Pull the plug. Mm. That's where we at. I'm not going to lie. Same Pops is going to actually be really hard. I don't think she realized how difficult that's going to be. All right. Dear Mom, I'm writing you this because I want to get a chance to say goodbye. For years, you have been my rock, my shoulder to lean on, and my best friend. It's going to be so hard to say goodbye. I've been holding on to you for my own selfish reasons, but I realize that for your future sake, AKA being Kells, that I have to let you go. Although Kells is emerging, I will always hold a piece of you with me. Now with that being said, <laughs> there are some things I have to get off my chest. First off, I ask, all I ask is to please be patient with me. I just want you to realize that in reality, if my mom was physically dying, that it would take me a very, very long time to get to a, a point to starting to accept that she's gone. And there will be moments when I slip up, but I am doing my very best. I love you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love you too. My name is Robert and my goal is to be a professional poker player. I came here when I was about three months old from Seoul, South Korea. I was adopted. My dad has always been there to protect me and to try and provide me a good life. And, and now that he's sick, I wish that I could be in a position to be able to protect him. Right now, I wanna spend the majority of my free time with my dad so I can enjoy um, the time that we have. I just want you to be happy in what you're doing and right now you <clears throat> you look like you're happy when you're playing poker i'm happy for the most part if i'm winning <laughs> if you're winning yeah <laughs> well, it's always great to have a goal well you'll make it we have every confidence in you i'd like him to see me pursue my dream of being a poker player and be successful at it love you bub <laughs> All right. I am Marissa, and I live in Midland, Texas. And I love to look anime. 
When I do my makeup, I do my hair, I dress up, I become what I feel like I am inside. I'm not playing a character. I am becoming another side of myself. Animate for me is not just something you do for an event, something you do for a job. This is my whole style. There is cosmetic surgery I want done in the future for more of an anime jawline. So I want this piece right here shaven down to be pointier. My mom has no idea that I want cosmetic surgery at all. <sighs> I'm extremely nervous and I'm actually very scared for my mother to find out because I know I'm going to have hell to pay for it. And it's really just going to push our relationship farther apart, probably. It's something that I want, but it's something that <laughs> causes issues between us. I just kind of miss my mother and having her around. And very much having second thoughts. <laughs> it really sucks to cry when you wear this much makeup. My name's Anna Leda, and I have misophonia. The moment I open my eyes, it's trigger. A trigger is a sound or movement that fills you with rage. Dripping, that drives me insane. The paper bags. My dog, you just feel it in the pit of your stomach and in your chest, and you're like shaking because you're so upset. You want to cry because you're so upset. You want to scream and like rip your hair out, slam doors and break plates. Like it's that kind of rage. You don't know what could happen. You could black out and not know what you did. I fantasize about wanting to like kill somebody. Like if they're eating with a fork and my mind, I'm like, I just want you to stop breathing. I want the fork to slowly go down your throat and come out of your neck just so you can stop because it's so hard to have to hear that. I get to that level of rage maybe five times a day. It's not that I don't want to see you eat and be healthy. You know what I mean? Like it's just that I can't hear it. It's the noise. It's not you actually doing the action. You know, I'm Puerto Rican, baby. I don't, I'm not going to eat like, <laughs> why are you scraping like that? Can you not do, no, like, stop. What, what? Just scrape it. It's OK. Oh, just don't scrape it. Can you not? What's wrong? Can I eat? No. I get upset because I cannot eat. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. It breaks my heart to know that he can't even be normal unless he is shooting up. What are you doing? You're creeping over here. My dad is a genuinely good person, but at the rate my father is going, it's only a matter of time before he does die of an overdose. And I can't just sit there and watch him kill himself. When I was young, I didn't know, but he was addicted to drugs. But when I was 11 years old, I saw my dad overdose. When he came out of the bathroom, he sat on the couch and he just stopped breathing. So I called 911 because I didn't know what was going on. I was traumatized. I didn't even want to see my dad for weeks. After I saw my dad overdose, my mom finally told me that he was addicted to heroin. And it's only gotten worse. He's overdosed so many times, I'm surprised he's alive. My name is Kevo, been doing music for a minute. I moved to LA, came back to a dead little brother, dead cousin, close friends gone. Difficult preaching is prosperous pleasure. Pleasure and preaching, man, it starts from the heart. Sacrifices only amount to the pressure. And then I'm reminded that's the reason why I started. Where well, I grew up, was infested with guns, gangs, drugs, death. Our murder rate has risen at least 60% in the past two or three years. And in the past month and a half, we witnessed over 22 deaths. I know people get shot and killed every day. There's nothing never really hit close to home. My brother, Lil Dave, he was shot at his crib at like four in the morning. I felt guilty because it's like, here I am, I'm in LA trying to, you know, pursue my career and like really follow my dreams or what, you know, what I left for. And there's a war going on back home. There's a, there's a lot of good things happening, but it's like, 
I could go on tour with Jay-Z tomorrow. It's not gonna change the fact that my little brother was cute. People think because I got released from the hospital and I'm in rehab right now that I'm okay. I'm not okay. Is that thing okay because it's hurting? I'm still connected to a machine because I have a hole in my back. My arm is still shattered. I'm not okay, and that's only physical. Just gonna dress it. I can't even start with mentally. The thing that's gonna hit me the most is gonna be about Lewis. Lewis didn't make it. He was my best friend, and he spent his last hours with me. I need to see it. I need to see Lewis's cross. I'm gonna miss you, bro. But I know we'll meet again someday. I know you're my guardian angel now. You're never gonna leave me. And I know you're in a better place. I love you, Louis. I'm gonna see you soon, brother. I love you. I needed to see Lewis's cross because I needed somehow to speak to him even though I speak to him every night. And I know he's there with me and he's gonna follow me all my life on this journey. Oh.